Senator lays out Senate Bill 1515 and recognizes Representative Noble to explain the bill. Thank you, Chairman, for giving me the opportunity to lay out Senate Bill 1515. The Ten Commandments are foundational to our American education system and to our American judicial system. Our earliest school textbooks and our earliest laws include and reflect this fundamental way to respect and treat others and their property. Religious liberty was the bedrock of American founding, and until 1971 Supreme Court decision in Lemon versus Kurtzman, America re regularly acknowledged the role that fundamental religious documents and principles had in American heritage and law. The Ten Commandments were and are displayed in public buildings across the United States, including in schools, government buildings, and courthouses, including the U.S. Supreme Court building. The problem is that for the last several decades, expression of, of that historical heritage has been restricted. One of the largest upheavals was in 1980 in Stone versus Graham, in which the Supreme Court used the Lemon Test to strike down Kentucky's law requiring the Ten Commandments to be displayed in public schools. Prior to Stone versus Graham, Many public schools display the Ten Commandments, and after Stone versus Graham, however, public schools across the country almost universally remove their Ten Commandment displays. Now, however, the legal landscape has changed. The Kennedy versus Bremerton School District in 2022, the Supreme Court overturned Lemon, eliminating that Lemon test, and instead looking to America's history and tradition for whether the government may recognize our religious heritage. In 2005, our Ten Commandments monument displayed here on our Capitol grounds, even using the Lemon Test, was upheld by the U.S. Supreme Court. You may note that the wording in this bill replicates the wording on that monument that is on our Capitol grounds. Senate Bill 1515 would require Texas public elementary and secondary schools to display the Ten Commandments in each classroom. This legislation will bring back this historic tradition of recognizing America's foundational heritage in both our education and our judicial system. Senate Bill 1515 restores those liberties that were lost and reminds students all across Texas of the importance of fundamental foundation of American uh, law and Texas law, the Ten Commandments. I do have some invited witnesses here today who are experts in their field who can answer uh, the more technical questions, and I am happy to answer any questions and reserve the right to close. All right. Thank you. Members, any questions for Representative Noble? All right. We'll reserve. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Representative Tallarico. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Noble. Um, I have lots of questions about this bill. Um, one, I want to first acknowledge that the Ten Commandments are important to me. Personally, important to my faith. I'm sure they're important to many people here on the dais. Uh, and in fact, I think the Ten Commandments are hard to uh, obey, um, and they're meant to be hard to obey. Um, and I don't always think that the legislature obeys the Ten Commandments. So I just want to walk through a couple. Um, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Are you aware the legislature is scheduled to meet this Saturday? I, I am aware of that. So that would be violating the I contend that that is a hard, you're right. Uh, thou shall not kill. Are you aware the legislature has refused to outlaw the death penalty? Um, again, uh, this we're using the words that are on the, uh, the monument because it has been upheld by the Supreme Court. But we're talking about murder here and not, and not justice. Uh, and the, certainly not war. The translation that I'm looking at in your bill is mm -hmm. thou shall not kill. I, absolutely. And that is that. And the reason we are using that language again is because that is the language that has been upheld by the Supreme Court. Uh, thou shall not commit adultery. Be true to the one you love. And the second commandment, which I think is the most important, thou shall not make to thyself any graven image meant to prevent idolatry. Absolutely. the creation of idols, the idea that some people would try to make an object, maybe two tablets to worship, rather than worshiping the God behind those two tablets. Are you worried that this bill is idolatrous? I do not. Why not? This bill is reflective of, of the principles that we need in our classrooms. And, and as a former school teacher, I know you are too. What do we need more than the 
reasons why we are doing the things that we're doing. Why do we not celebrate the need to respect others, to respect authority? I, I contend that this is absolutely needed. And, um, and I get where you're going with that particular commandment, but it's there and it is historical and it is foundational. Would you be open to an am amendment to the bill saying that if a member of the legislature violates these commandments that we can no longer mandate public school teachers put it in classrooms? It is my uh, intention to keep this bill clean as it came over from the Senate. Uh, I want to talk about uh, religious inclusion. Um, the Supreme Court case that you cited, Kennedy, was about a football coach who prayed on the football field. And the Supreme Court said that the Establishment Clause the First Amendment in our Constitution was prohibits the state, a government, like all of us, from establishing a state religion. It doesn't apply to that because it's his personal faith, a personal expression of his faith. Your bill doesn't do that, though. It mandates that every single teacher put the Ten Commandments in their classroom. Is there so, a difference again, between yeah, yes, there, prohibiting a, difference. A, an individual school employee or teacher from practicing or expressing their faith versus the state now mandating that one particular faith be expressed in a classroom. So um, are you referring to the faith of Judaism? Because that's where this comes from. Is sure. that what you're referring to? Yes. I contend that the historic and foundational um, reference of, of the Ten Commandments in our nation's history is what we're looking at here and not uh, not the bunny path that I think you've taken us on. I am not an attorney, and I do not play one on TV, but I do have attorneys, uh, an attorney here that can speak to that better than I can. And so um, I would like to defer to, to let them answer that, if that's okay with you. Would you be, that's fine, and I can ask the attorney these questions too. Um, but as the bill author, I want to drill down. Would you be open to an amendment that would allow uh, schools to post the five precepts of Taoism. One Again, of that is not foundational to our American judicial and educational system. Your bill... That, was, that, that does not fit into that, that criteria which the Supreme Court has set forth. There are many, many documents that, would, that have influenced the American Constitution, including the Code of Hammurabi, the Magna Carta. Would you be open to a teacher posting one of those instead of the Ten Commandments? I am today. That is not my bill. And so the, the major world religions, in addition to Judaism and Christianity, Buddhism, uh, Hinduism, which are represented at our schools, you're not willing to allow one of those uh, commandments or one of those religious doctrines to be posted in the classroom? Again, we are talking about something that has historically been in our education system, in our earliest textbooks in America, where were these Ten Commandments and 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 actually lots of Bible references were our earliest American textbooks. That's what we're talking about here. I'm not familiar with what you're talking. I am familiar with the Magna Carta, uh, but the others I'm not familiar with, and so I can't speak to those. But do you see why, if our First Amendment is forbidding the state from establishing a state religion, that mandating that one tradition be elevated above the rest would be a violation of that First Amendment. I disagree with that because, again, our judicial system and our educational system, this is foundational to them. I've, I've and and I, I, am, well. I am so, um, I, if we don't know where we've been, how do we know where we're, we're going? I, I, I'm, I love history, and this is very foundational to the history of our nation. But I've just listed other documents that are also foundational and you're not willing to include those in the bill. It's only I am this. not in this bill. I'm, it is my intention to keep this bill clean. So it's only the Ten Commandments. Absolutely. And tell me about, because every time on this committee um, that we try to teach students values like empathy or kindness, we're told we can't because that's the parent's role. Every time on this committee that we try to teach basic sex education to keep our kids safe, we're told that's the parents' role. But now you're putting religious commandments, literal commandments, in our classrooms, and you're saying that's the state's role. Why is that not the parents' role? That 
that, that's really an interesting rabbit trail that you've gone on with that. Uh, because really what we're talking about here is a historical foundational document to our nation's education history and our judicial history. And, and, and um, I, those other things are great and interesting, but they're not foundational to us educationally and judicially. Would you be comfortable with adding language to receive uh, parental consent from all the parents of students in the classroom before putting it up? I, I would not. I am, again, going to keep it clean as it came over. So you don't want parental consent when it comes to students receiving religious commandments? I don't believe that. I, again, I think that these are foundational to, 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 being a good, um, to being a good citizen and being a good member of a classroom. And, and I know that our teachers are more and more and more having to fight for um, classroom management over the behavior of students, and I don't think that these commandments would uh, in any way, I think these commandments would help with that, with that classroom management need. I just, I, I want to make a comment, and thank you for answering my questions. I'll probably have more later. But, and I say this to you as a fellow Christian, Representative Noble, I know you're a, a devout Christian, as, and so am I. This bill, to me, is not only unconstitutional, it's not only un-American, I think it is also deeply unchristian. And I say that because I believe this bill is idolatrous, I believe it is exclusionary, and I believe it is arrogant. And those three things, in my reading of the gospel, are diametrically opposed to the teachings of Jesus. You probably know Matthew 6, 5, when Jesus says, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners. When you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. A religion that has to force people to put up a poster to prove its legitimacy is a dead religion. And it's not one that I want to be a part of. It's not one that I think I am a part of. You know that in scripture, it says faith without works is what? Dead. Is dead. My concern is instead of bringing a bill that will feed the hungry, clothe the naked, heal the sick, we're instead mandating that people put up a poster. And we both follow a teacher, a rabbi, who said, don't let the law get in the way of loving your neighbor. Loving your neighbor is the most important law. It is the summation of all the law and all the prophets. I would submit to you that our neighbor also includes the Hindu student who sits in a classroom, the Buddhist student who sits in a classroom, and an atheist student who sits in a classroom. And my question to you is, does this bill truly love those students? I'm going to go a different direction than I think you're trying to lead me. And that is that a very great wrong was done in our classrooms with that 1980 um, decision. Because that's, that they were, uh, this document was in classrooms prior to that. In fact, I think that this this bill actually writes a wrong that was done all those years ago based on a, a what has now been considered a failed decision by the Supreme Court. So I contend that we are righting a wrong, not causing one. Last thing I'll say, and I know we have other, uh, I'm sure there are other questions or the witnesses, is I just worry this is what gives us religious people a bad name. That instead of living out the way of Jesus, we're instead imposing our beliefs on other people. Instead of leading by example, we're leading by mandates. And so I'm very, offended by this legislation. I know you and I have worked together and I'm not casting aspersions on you and I would love to work with you, uh, but it, as it is currently written, I find this to be a deeply offensive bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right, members, any additional questions? Right, Representative Schaefer. Thank you. Uh, Representative Noble, uh, I, I know that you uh, read your Bible and you uh, know what Jesus said often in the New Testament. 
How many times when Jesus was interacting with someone, he, did he not say, have you not read? And when he was saying, have you not read, was he referring back to the Old Testament? And did Jesus come to um, eliminate the law? Or did he fulfill it? He fulfilled it. And so, if Macaulay's going to refer to the words of Jesus, shouldn't we also acknowledge that Jesus was the author of the words in the Ten Commandments? Because we believe those are, those are God's words. And so, uh, to use the words of Jesus, to say we should not use the Old Testament, is really uh, not a clear understanding uh, of Jesus at all. And when you read the Ten Commandments, isn't it filled with love for our neighbor? Isn't it filled for honoring God? And every aspect of it points back to loving God and loving our neighbor. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. Thank you. All right. Members, any uh, additional questions? All right. Representative Tallarico. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Throughout the New Testament, which I know you've read, there are religious extremists, Pharisees, who tell Jesus that it's more important to follow the letter of the law. And Jesus repeatedly throughout the New Testament is in conflict with those religious authorities because he repeatedly says, you can't let the law get in the way of loving your neighbor. And he actually says he can sum up all the laws, all the prophets with two commandments, love God and love neighbor. That is the summation of the law. And that's what we want our school children to would you, then would Perfect. Would you be open to an amendment rather than the Ten Commandments? We post in every classroom, love thy neighbor as yourself. I would not. Why not? Because I want to keep this bill clean as it came over. So if Jesus tells you the most important law, the most important is love law, thy yeah. neighbor as yourself, you're not willing to put that in classrooms around the state. He, he summed it up in two ways. Mm -hmm. Love the Lord thy God and love thy neighbor as thyself. You're, you're cutting out half of that. I would be willing to put said. both of those. I am going to keep this bill clean. It is my intention to keep this bill clean as it came over. Thank you, Mr. Senate. Senate. Members, any additional questions? All right, we'll begin uh, with invited testimony. Um, we'll have a five-minute time limit on that. We do have a hard stop right before 9 o'clock, so just want to remind everybody.